Hello. Happy getting to the end of September. I can't believe that's happening. Um, I'm doing a spontaneous podcast recording today. I actually have a ton in the works right now where I'm, you know, writing podcast outlines, making sure everything that is key and essential that I mention <laughs> is in there. It just, it takes a lot of upfront work and focus and creation. Um, but today as I was working and <clears throat> getting my week started, um, I wanted to share something with you that I think will be so valuable and useful to take with you into weddings and shoots as you're still creating this season. Um, because I just had a wedding this past Saturday, it's Monday right now. And I had this like aha moment of, oh, that's how I was able to create under stress and under pressure. And I was like, I need to share this with you because uh, if it could help me create and even try new things that I've never tried before under a time crunch. And it got me, literally, it got me so excited. The photos that I created got me so excited and I got them in a time crunch that when I ended up coming home at like midnight, I backed up everything and I just ended up watching some TV and winding down, even though it was late, just because I felt like it. And then when everything was backed up and I, I had it all up and uploaded into Lightroom so I can send it to my virtual assistant for her to cull, I was like, okay, honestly, I just, I can't wait. I just need to go through some photos, see how they turned out and edit a couple. And I ended up staying up till like 3.30 in the morning, um, just editing some sneak peeks for the couple and also just myself, just because I was just so excited to see how they turned out to like create a bit. And that's what I ended up doing. And one thing that I've been doing lately is just focusing more on doing things that um, may not logically make sense. Like, oh yeah, like tomorrow is Sunday and you're going to spend all day with your family you probably want to get some sleep. But in the moment, I just felt so energized even after a whole wedding that I'm like, yeah, I want to stay up for an hour just playing around with different edits, trying different things, um, getting a sneak peek ready. I never freaking do that, but I'm like, whatever. That's what feels fun to me right now. And that's what I want to do. And then I ended up having like six hours of sleep. And I, be I still, even though I was kind of tired on Sunday, I still felt so energized because I was so, my cup was so filled with that playful creativity that I got to experience the night before. So yeah, I got that excited about my images that I created under a time crunch. And so I want to share um, what I did <laughs> to make that happen. So pretty much I'll give you the down low. So on Saturday's wedding, it was so funny. It was like, uh, the groom this time, he was the one it's so rare. I find it's so rare for the groom to be like the main person planning and in contact with and for the bride to be totally hands off. That's just what worked in their dynamic. He was really excited about that. So he was the one that was planning everything. Um, and on the day of when I met them, I noticed that he was very like, he liked to be very punctual. And so many times throughout the day, especially when it came time for photos, like um, first look portraits of the two of them, uh, wedding party photos and then family photos. He asked me so many times, Hey Sarah, what time is it? And I would tell him, and I'm not going to lie. I would tell him like, cause I could already tell that he gets stressed about it. I told him a white lie and I always told him it was five minutes earlier than it actually was so that he would <laughs> calm his energy down a little bit because I really needed that. I needed that as a creative and my, I'm, I am so on point with keeping shit on time on wedding days that and I just wanted him to trust me on that, but I knew that wouldn't happen because that was his stuff. That's his stuff that I can't just like make go away on the wedding day and say, trust me, we'll be on time. And he'll be like, okay, magically healed of his like time anxiety. No, I can't do that. So and every time he's like, what time is it? And I was like, let's say four or five. I was like, oh, it's four. And it was just my little strategy. But it's only because I knew that I could get us. I always get everything done on time on wedding days. Always. It's just my magical powers. Um, anyway, so he was constantly like, oh, Sarah, what time is it? And then I would say it. And even though I would tell him five minutes sooner, he's like, okay, because I ideally want to be done at this time because then we have this to do after. And I'm like, yes, I know. I know. <laughs> and all I could do was just respond calmly. Yes, I hear you. I get it we will be on time. I got you. That's what I would say. 
Um, and what I what I wanted to say, like what wanted to burst out of me was to say, I can't be creative under pressure. So just relax. I got this. Like just stop because you're making my ideas go away. I'm getting no ideas and then you're going to end up with no, no photos. So just like stop asking me what time it is. Stop telling me what time we need to be, where we need to be. I know I got this, right? But I couldn't say that, right? First of all, if I reacted like in a frustrated way, I would have just been bad vibes. It's their day. I never, ever want to react. I want to regulate myself so that I don't like, you know, fuck up their experience. Um, also, even if I said it calmly, like let's say I said, hey, um, I can't re- create as well under pressure. So just relax. I got this. I can't. Even that, me saying that, I don't think would be useful because if he's like, oh, wait, she can't create under pressure, but what What if then we are late and then there is pressure and then what if then we don't get any good photos? So now we have to really be on time, you know, like his head could go that way. So the best thing for me to do was to let him experience his experience and for me to say, I hear you, I understand, I got you. I hear you, I understand, I got you. Because at the end of the day, we all just want to be heard and understood and that every time I said that he's like okay and he was still a little stressed in the background but I'm like okay that's all I need and then I would go to okay Sarah you have to produce how are you going to find your creativity when you're feeling the stressful energy around him um and I I did I I somehow again I told you I came home and I'm like oh my god I can't believe I experimented with this stuff that I've been scared to experiment with and try something new and shoot from a different angle and I did it under a time crunch I'm like how and why I was literally in the shower I'm like how did that happen how did I get to do that and I realized it's because I switched up my mindset from feel like to to a thought that would create pleasure and excitement instead of pressure and stress. So if I continue to hold on to the thought, I can't be creative under pressure. I can't be creative under pressure. Then I would have probably done really safe stuff. Probably would have not been able to like go with the flow as much and get as much of their authenticity in the photos. And on top of that, create really new creative images with like movement and a certain perspective. Um, I wish I could literally just like link. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to link the photos um, in the show notes here uh, for you because I'm actually planning on posting them today anyway. So yeah, if you go into the show notes, it'll be linked to the exact Instagram post. It'll be like 10 photos that I post. And there's these ones that are like, um, I shot from like this, like there's an indoor spot. I shot at Chateau du Charme in Niagara Falls, Ontario. And there's this indoor spot where there's this like really cool checkered floor bar area. And you can go upstairs and there's like an inside balcony where you can shoot down. And I'm like, oh my God, the light was coming in in a cool way. Um, I got this really cool upwards perspective and the checkered floor looked really cool. And I wanted to get them walking um, through in like a motion blur. And I'm still practicing that a lot. It's scary to pl- practice motion blur because everyone walks at different speeds. The light settings are different and you don't want to like quote unquote waste time to create photos that'll look shit blurry. They have to look artistic and cool blurry. And like there's a feeling blurry about it. It's a skill and that I'm practicing. So I was scared to do it, but I was so determined. Um, so yeah, you will cl- you can click the link, see those photos. But what I did was I switch, switched up my mindset Two, I like a challenge and challenge accepted. I don't know about how many of you have watched um, How I Met Your Mother. I remember Barney would always like someone would always say something to him and and he would be like, challenge accepted. (laughs) Roy and I used to laugh at that all the time. It was just so funny how he delivered that and it just stuck in my head. I'm like, challenge accepted. And so I personally like to be challenged. I, like I think that's why I really do thrive in on wedding days because it's you have one chance to get that photo. Let's say during the ceremony, let's say first kiss. Um, this is the one day they have. You can't like 
miss anything or and of course we always miss moments always there's like so many moments happening it's impossible to get everything but in general you know what i'm saying you can't like screw up all the family photos and then they're all all overexposed or like you know it's like i like that challenge of like this is my only shot today in every single moment to make things happen um i thrive off of that for some reason um <laughs> i like problem solving uh and i like adrenaline rushes and I like to feel like I'm alive and excited. My heart's pumping. Um, so yeah, I, I personally like a challenge. So in my mind, I'm like, I gamified it. I was like, okay, I'm a little short on time because that's how it felt to me when he feel, when he felt like we were short on time, I ended up feeling like we're short on time. And I'm, I don't know why it's like, it stressed me out. If, if when couples are like, when couples are like, yeah, okay, let's go for photos. And then I know in my head we have 15 minutes, but they're just like not even thinking about the time. Somehow the time just expands and I feel like we get so much more done within 15 minutes. But when someone feels like, that, I don't know. So that's how I was feeling in that moment. But when I gamified it and I was like, okay, challenge accepted. How many amazing shots can I get in a small amount of time? I'm like, let's go, let's do this. And that worked so well for me because I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to get this shot. Um, him leading her walking. Okay, got that. That looks amazing. I know how to do those so well. I always kill them. Safe shot, done. Okay, let's time. Now, next one, let me experiment with something new. And I kind of did like a pattern and I can't believe I like our minds are so wicked. Like they're so fascinating how I even thought of this, but now I'm realizing what I actually did. I was like pattern, safe shot, something I, I'm already... I know how to do really well, then risky new idea, safe shot, risky new idea. I did it in a pattern as we were walking back towards where we had to walk to, to the reception to be on time for him. Um, and yeah. And then the very last one was the one I was t telling you about the overhead shot on that um, checkered floor. That's the very last one before they enter their reception. Um, and yeah. So, and by the way, this post, I, I don't know which photos I'm going to include yet. For sure, the ones that I mentioned with the checkered floor, but I, those ones I'm just going to talk about. I'm not going to include all the portraits, obviously. So, um, I'm just going to have, I'm just going to reference those. But um, yeah, so that were what that's what worked for me, gamifying it. And what I mean by gamifying it. So, because I personally like games, I like a challenge, that's how I was able to find pleasure in the moment instead of holding on to the pressure. And what I'm noticing lately, I've learned, I've been learning a lot from um, Andrea Crowder, which is an incredible entrepreneur that she leans more into making decisions out of pleasure rather than pressure. And that means she's always connected to her zone of genius. Um, and it's just, it's so fascinating to me. And I've, I haven't realized this, the way she explains things it just makes logical sense, but I haven't realized that that's what I've been doing for a long time in many aspects of like wedding photography. Um, I'm still learning how to do it in other aspects of my business and her talking about it makes me realize, oh, I see where I'm acting from pressure. Oh, I see where I'm acting from pleasure. And just me noticing how I do it naturally within wedding photography makes me excited that I'm like, oh, that is something really cool to share to help others like be able to access their creativity on demand in even in a, in a moment that could be stressful and could totally block our creativity. So I wanted to, to share this. It may not work for everybody because, you know, you might be listening and be like, well, I actually don't like challenges. I'm not really one into games. Um, I like feeling calm when I create, right? So this advice may not be for you. It's not for everybody, right? Just because this is what works for me, it's not what should work for you. But it's something I hope that this just opens up your mind to think differently. Okay, how can I personally in those moments switch my mindset from being like, this is so stressful. There's not enough time. Why can't they stop too? How can I find pleasure in this? How can I get excited about this? Where can I find ease? If you ask yourself those questions, your subconscious mind is programmed to automatically answer them for you. And you're going to find this amazing piece of gold advice that's already within you. Um, and that you, the fact that you have that and you have access to that at any moment that you want, if you ask the right questions on a wedding day, 
is just incredible. Like you, you're always resourced pretty much. Um, so that's what I wanted to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I have so many more episodes coming your way. I am just taking my time creating them because that's what gives me pleasure. And I don't want to feel pressured to, you know, have this episode come out on this day just because I should. And it's that expectation is created in my head. So um, I want to make sure I create the best for you. And this episode came to me today and I just wanted to share and it felt very aligned. But if this episode helped you, please uh, shoot me a DM uh, at Sarah Monica Photo on Instagram, Sarah No H, Monica with a K. Um, and also because I want to make sure that this podcast reaches more photographers that want to get more clarity on how to run their business on their terms, how to feel fully fulfilled in their business and live a life of abundance at the same time. Uh, share this episode with a photographer friend you think would really appreciate this advice. Maybe they tell you, oh my God, weddings stress me out. Damn, I wish I wasn't so in my head. I wish I got, I thought of this idea or this idea. And, you know, so maybe if you send them over this episode, just uh, share this link with them and um, they will find it helpful and they'll be grateful for you as well. So thank you so much for listening and I will connect with you very soon with some amazing juicy episodes coming your way. All right, bye. Yay! Thank you so much for hanging out with me and tuning into this episode. If you got value out of it, please feel free to message me on Instagram at Sarah Monica Photo. That's Sarah No H, Monica with a K photo, to let me know. I get so freaking energized hearing from others that what I've said has had a positive impact on their lives. Also, make sure to hit subscribe to the Shine and Thrive podcast to never miss an episode. I'm so grateful for you and I'm sending you all the productive vibes your way so you have the best week ever.